with the voice of triumph. Somebody say shout with the voice of triumph. Has anybody triumphed this week? Hallelujah. Has anybody triumphed over the devil? The way that you triumph over him is that you got to step on his head, smack him, smack him in the face, whatever you got to do. But we thank God, hallelujah, for this another day that the Lord has kept us. With our minds stayed on Jesus. There's some that don't have a mind, don't have their right mind, don't have a right mind to do right or to act right or to be right or do whatever. Praise God. But we thank God for a mind. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together again. Nothing like a praise. Come on, y'all. If you got to close your eyes and shut everybody and everything out, you want to praise them. Hallelujah. Come on. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We got to learn how to praise God even if you're going through something difficult. You got to praise the Lord. You got to magnify his name. Don't worry about what's going on and what's not going on. But we got to praise God. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I said the presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I feel God in here on today. And it feels mighty good, don't it? Feels mighty good, don't it? Praise God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Nobody gets the glory but our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, this is the quietest world that we're going to live in. Banks are shutting down and crashing and failing. They just said the third bank, the Swiss bank, is now failing. But let me tell you something. Jesus never fails. 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 Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. Come on, sing it. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but Jesus never fails. Come on, give him a praise before you sit down. He never fails. He never fails. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he never fails. Oh my God. Y'all have to be happy about this thing. Because there's nobody that can do you like Jesus. I mean, you could try somebody and I'm telling you, they won't be able to match Jesus. Bill Gates cannot match Jesus with all the money that he has. He cannot match Jesus because Jesus Christ came to save us. And there's nobody that can save us but God. Hallelujah. 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 We got to keep a praise going on in here today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the devil want to put his bricks on you. He wants to stop you because he knows praise is comely. He knows that God inhabits. Mm -mm -mm. He inhabits. The praise of his people. I said he inhabits the praise of you, sister. Praise God. He inhabits the praise of you, Martha Calloway. He inhabits. He couples it up. God gets excited when you start to praise him. Then he starts to want to do things for you when you praise him. Hallelujah. When you bless the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that says, I will bless the Lord. All oh, my soul and all that is within me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Oh, my God, my God. I tell you, I feel all right right now. I feel all right in this place. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because when I can lift up my hands, I got something to thank Him for. When I can stomp my feet, I got something to thank God for. When I can move my head, my neck, hallelujah, I got something to praise God for. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what you're going through when we got a God that can bring you out. Hallelujah. Come on here, believers. We got to believe God today. We got to believe God today. So many people are just believing in everything but God. Hallelujah. When something's just not correct and right going your way, you get all out of sorts. But we don't have to get out of sorts when we have the power of the Holy Ghost moving in us. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't you worry about what's going on in you. Who's here? Who's not here? So what? God is here. And he's here to set you free. He's here to meet your need. He's here to deliver you. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. God is good. And he's worthy. Hallelujah. Of our praise. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. This is what God wants us to do. He wants us to praise him. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your big mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we must praise God. Hallelujah. We must praise God. We must praise God. We must praise God. Let everything that have breath. Anybody got breath in their body? There's some in the hospital that don't even know that they're here. On a respirator. You can have your seats. Don't know they can't move. Can't talk. Can't walk. Don't even know that they're in the land. And they're not in there, they're comatose. But when we have the activity of our limbs, we ought to thank God. Hallelujah. Hey, Kaba Shanda, the Robo Saka. Oh, glory to God. My God, hallelujah, he's so good. I heard uh, Elder Jennifer sing the song, God is Great. He's Great. But greater is he that is in you. Are you able to get My God. Greater is he than that's in you than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know where my help come from. I know where my help come from. I said I know where my help comes from. The world don't know where their help is coming from. Not a right about now. They don't know where their help is coming from. They get nervous and they worry and they're upset because everything is crumbling. Everything going down but the word of God. Hallelujah. Everything is going down. I'm, I'm almost finished with the message. Praise God. God bless you, Mother Overseer. Bellamy. Let's put our hands together for that beautiful queen over here. Oh, look at that now. She in her fuchsia. Praise God. Don't she look good? It's good to honor those. We need to learn how to honor one another. Hallelujah. Something about it's something about the minorities. They don't like to honor one another. Hating on what you think they look like hating on yourself because the Bible says love thy neighbor as thyself so I love me and I love you let's turn our Bibles before we do that let's hold up our Bibles or whatever you have the word on we're going to make a confession of faith we need to learn how to speak into the atmosphere Speak the word of God. Hallelujah. In season and out of season. 
don't allow the enemy to take what God has placed in your spirit. Say, this is my Bible. This is the word of God. I will be taught the word of God. Satan, you will not distract me. I come against all distractions. This is the word that is going to be poured into me. Thank you, Jesus, for changing my life, changing my circumstance, changing my mind towards the things of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Somebody praise God. We got to declare and we got to decree. Hallelujah. Declare and decree. Hallelujah. Declare and decree a thing and so shall it be. And the scripture said where the word of a king is, there is power. We're the word of a king. So you speak out the word as a king and priest in the earth. And says wherever the, the word that is spoken, he said it's going to go out and it's not going to return unto you void. But it's going to accomplish therein where you have mm, sent it to. We got to know the word. Let's look at Daniel chapter 3. Hallelujah. God bless um, my beautiful, handsome husband, my Boaz. <laughs> Boaz. Bishop Richard L. Spaulding. And he came today and um, uh, to be with us. Mm. And I thank God for my DPRT family. Y'all, 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 I thank God for you. <laughs> Okay, there's some music for some that couldn't get it moving. <laughs> See, I, I don't need no music. But thank God for the music. That's right, because you're going to help me around here. Okay, Daniel 3, let's look at verse 14. And I'm going to be reading. It says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image that I have set up. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the sautery, the decimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the image which I have made. Let me tell you something. It disturbs me when a Christian or a believer says, I just listen to all kind of music. There's a problem here. If you've been if you've been converted, if you've been if you repented, if you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you're not to listen to all kind of music. Folk are listening to Beyonce and they just are rocking and they're rolling into blues. Don't you know that the blues will give you the blues? Then they say, Oh, I just got to listen to my jazz. Well, I just got to listen to my gospel because I want the spirit of the Lord to move in my life. And not all gospel do I listen to because some of them don't make no sense. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I like that old time music. Yeah. Now, that's just me now. You know, some of the new ones is okay. Yeah. And, and I don't have a problem with that. But what I'm saying is you're feeding your spirit yes. with all kinds of music. Let's go on and read because... I know I'm messing with somebody right about now. Don't tell me about my music now. But if he worship not, he said, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is it? That God that shall deliver you out of my hands. Are y'all listening? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, God whom we serve uh -huh. is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Now this is something that really helped me to shout my socks off today. And he will deliver. Listen, they have an assurity. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Yeah. What I'm going to be talking to you about then for the next few minutes is God's got my back. God's got my back. Turn to somebody and say, God's got my back. Got my back. 
look down the other side and the other row and say, God's got my back. God's got my back. Hallelujah. When your friends have turned on you and your family have turned on you and you can't find your boss, the job, or nothing that is going to take or just watch your back. But let me just tell you this. And let's look at Isaiah 43 and 1. Isaiah, because I want you to get this. God's got my back. But now thus saith the Lord, Isaiah 43, that created the old Jacob and he that formed the old Israel, fear not. I love that scripture that you read back there, brother. Um, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. What does it say? God says here that thou art mine. But look at this. When thou passest through the waters, somebody say, I'll be there. I'll be there. And through the rivers, say, I'll be there. I'll be there. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, say, I'll be, I'll be there. Thou shall not be burned, say, I'll be, I'll be there. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee, say, I'll be, I'll be there. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. The fifth verse, matter of fact, the fourth verse. Since thou wast precious in my sight, Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather from the west. And it says in the sixth verse, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. God's got my back. I said, God's got my back. Now, when we look at the word or the meaning of God has your back or I got your back, this is a military phrase that they used to say, I got your six o'clock. And they would say this during the World War I and World War II, the fighter pilots, they started to use this and say, I got your six which really meant I got your back. Yeah. So in other words, it said that I'm covering the most vulnerable part of you. Right. And that is your back. Brother, stand up right there and put your back against that wall. Stand there, put, put it against the wall. Sometimes our back is up against a wall and it looks as though that you can't get out of that situation. Um, Sister Renee, stand up and put your back against the wall. That's all right. Come on, you can do it. Oh, praise God. There she go. Her back is against the wall. His back is against the wall. And I know that sometimes we feel as though our back is against the wall. We don't have eyes in the back of our head. We would like to see what's going on in the back. But we cannot do that. I want you to step forward two times. When they step forward two times, stop. When we talk about God having our back, then, then we need to move away from that wall. We need to move away from that wall because God has your back. Nothing has your back but that wall. That wall is innate. It cannot move. It does not function. It cannot adhere to what you are going through. But you can always say that God's got my back. Amen. Somebody say, God's got my back. <laughs> the enemy will try to creep up on you. Y'all can say, the enemy will try to creep up behind you. But let me tell you something. God is saying, listen, I'm going to cover your rear. I'm going to cover what's going on in the back of you. Because you can't see. I don't care how much you turn your head, turn your neck. You will not be able to see behind you. But you can always say, God, you got my back. God, you got this. <laughs> it signifies when you're talking about that. I'm going to cover your rear. It signifies loyalty and faithfulness because God is faithful. Y'all don't hear what I said. I said God is faithful. He, it signifies support. He said, I'll support you. He said, listen, fear not for I am with thee. I will withhold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You don't have to fear what the devil is going on. You don't have to worry about
to accuse you of stuff that you have not even done. But God said, I'm watching out for you. I'm looking out for you. God's got my back. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Put your hands together. He's saying, God's got my back. He's saying, listen, I got you covered. You know, they say today, they don't say, I got your back. They say, I got you. I got you. I got, I got you. But let me tell you something. God's got us. God's got us in the palms of his hands. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't care what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You said, well, I'm sick in my body and I'm wrapped with pain. And the doctor told me this and the doctor told me this. Been told me that. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. God's got your back. God's watching over you. Oh, yes, he is. Even in the operating room, when the surgeons are in there. Sometimes I heard one time a story when they were operating on the wrong person. And they took out the wrong kid. They took the kidney out of the person. And the other person, they cut off their leg. That other person's leg was supposed to be cut off. But let me tell you something. God still got my back. He'll watch you in the surgery room as the doctors are operating. He'll even go to the courtroom when the lawyers begin to go forth and present. An overseer called me on the other day, and normally when people call me, I start right away praying to God, what is it that you have for me to bring to the people? And he said, I got the back. He said, let them know I got the back. He'll protect you from the darkness of the enemy. Somebody say, I know he will. Somebody know it. You ever been there? You know he will. Did he ever deliver you from something? Did he ever watch out for you when you didn't have no food on your table? Didn't God watch out for you? Some of your bellies are so big now because God watched out for you. There's no liquor. 
that can give me a high like Jesus. You want to get high? Sniff off his word. It's a sweet savior. It's a sweet flavor. Sniff off of that. Sniff off of this word. They don't taste and see. Let the Lord is good. I want y'all to see this. It says, listen, king. He said, listen, if you don't bow, I'm going to put you in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And they weren't worried about it because they understood that God had the back. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is when I look at this scripture in, in, in Daniel chapter 3 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. They already knew he was able. Now listen to this, from the burning fiery furnace, then it says not only did they know that he was able to do it, but it says, and he will. Amen. Do, do y'all say, and it says, and he will deliver. Y'all don't see that, you gotta see that. It says, and he will deliver. Yeah. So that means that they were trusting in God. Yeah. They didn't even see God deliver them yet, but they knew, but they believed it. We got to believe God's word. That's why I had to confess, make a confession of faith, decree and declare a thing. You have to decree and declare a thing. Listen, I might not be delivered yet, but I'm going to be delivered. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know he's going to do it. That's what I normally say. I said, God, this is a tough one here. But God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I put it in your hands. And that's what they were saying. I put our lives into your hand. We got to put our lives into his hand. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, y'all don't hear. Let me get the scripture. He says, and he will deliver us out of what? Thine hand. You see that? He was, he was I told you he wasn't talking, they weren't talk, he wasn't talking about that golden image. He wanted them really to bow to him. But it says here that you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. He was mad. He was angry. He was upset because they did not want to bow. So he took some men and had them thrown in there with all their hats and their coats and whatever else they had. And they turned the heat up. The devil will turn the heat up on you, Brother Jim. Seven times hotter. Oh, okay. One degree up ain't going to bother him. Three degrees ain't going to hurt him. 
Five degrees, he start feeling the fire on his butt. But then the seventh degree, seven times up, let me tell you something. Seven times up, he turns it up. And then when then he came back and they said, you got to see this king. And as the king came to the door, he saw that the men were walking around. <laughs> in the fire. Sometimes you in the fire. Can't pay this bill. Can't pay that bill. I can't make it. You hear what I'm saying? But and I've been there. I had I've had like almost thirty thousand dollars worth of credit card debt. Guess what? Don't have no credit card debt. <laughs> Because in the fire, I did not give up. I did not stop. And matter of fact, that plastic gets us in trouble. Because it's easy to pull out the plastic. There was times that I had money in my pocket, and, 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 and it was just easier for me to pull out the plastic and see if I could charge it. Then I would just go and apply for charge cards to see if they would give it to me. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? But sometimes the enemy will turn up the heat on you just to try your faith. But the trying of our faith worketh patience. Amen. I've learned that we have to have a patient ministry. That's what I call the patience ministry. I had to wait on God. Wait on God to deliver me. God wants to deliver somebody here today. And as the king went up to the fiery furnace, he not only saw three men, but he saw Four. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. This is exciting to me. He saw four men, and he said, and it looked like, now this is the king's head, and it looked like the son of God. He hadn't even seen the son of God. But he said, it looked like the son of God. He said, I know that these men must be of God, because not one hair on their head was burned, neither were their clothes burned. They didn't even smell. You won't smell like you've been going through anything. You won't look like uh, what you've been through. Uh, because God got my back. God got my back. Woo! When the enemy comes, Lord, I'm done, y'all. I ain't through. I'm just going to stop. Let me tell you about this scripture. When the enemy comes in, Hallelujah. Thank you. And a lot of y'all say, when the enemy comes in like a flood, why are y'all making a flood something that the enemy is as big as? Oral Roberts said, I think, I'm trying to think of the right book, but I can't think of it now. But it was a book. He says that a flood can't contain you. So when the enemy comes in, comma. Like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. You got it. Yeah. It says, when the enemy comes in, they got the comma in the wrong place. That's right. They got, when the enemy comes in like a flood, then they got the comma. No, it's when the enemy comes in, comma. Like a flood, the Lord, somebody say the Lord. The Lord will lift up a standard against the devil. Listen, and when the devil tries to come against you, he is a defeated foe. You got to know that you're not defeated, but you can say I'm victorious. Tried to shut you you out from your blessings. But the blessings of the Lord maketh you rich. And addeth no sorrow. Oh, Oh, y'all need to get excited about this. The blessings of the Lord maketh you rich. Well, I'm on a fixed income. So am I. But the Lord will bless you. Bless you when you're coming in and going out. Why? Because he's watching my back. He knows who's trying to come up against you. And even before, and something about being bishop, um, um, before, if some, something has happened, God lets us know that it's getting ready to happen. Yes. Or it has happened by somebody telling us or by somebody calling us 
something, God always has a way of letting us find out. That's right. You know why? Because we're we're dealing in the spirit realm. We're not dealing with all the musics. Because the enemy who used to be Lucifer, he's no longer Lucifer, but he is the devil. He is Satan. He was he was uh he had music all inside of him when he was in heaven. Yes, he did. He had all of the instruments on the inside of him. But when he sinned against God, God kicked him out of the earth. Got, he came down and he perverted the music. My God. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't know if anybody yeah, gets anything yeah. out of it. Yeah. But Satan perverted the music. That's why I said watch what goes into your ear gate. Because whatever you put in your ears go into your spirit. What, what you see on TV because it goes into your eye gate and goes down into your spirit. And there are so many things that they're showing on TV. I, would, I turn it when I don't like what I see. You hear what I'm saying? I can't deal with all that cursing and stuff. The movie be going good. Then they go, I said, what? No, I'll crack a jack. <laughs> And they be just cussing up or something. Matter of fact, I heard a preacher last week. She was cussing on. Yes, you know what? Yes. Y'all heard her too? Yes. But anyway, but let me tell you something. You got to know who your creator is. Yes. Who do you belong to? You're supposed to be a preacher. You're going to beat somebody's what? Yes. That's just what she said. And so it's publicly said, so I just said it, but I ain't saying the word. Let me tell you something. You gotta let God have your back. That's right. Stand to your feet. I'm done. You say she done? Yeah, I'm done. Come on, put your hands together. That's a nice pocket book. Overseer, that's a beautiful pocket <laughs> Stand to your feet, everybody. Oh, all of the building, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. God is in this place. Somebody don't know Jesus as their personal Savior. But God said, today that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. God wants you. You said that the army wants a few good men. But God's army wants a whole lot of good men and women. The devil been hanging on you too long for too long but God said I need, have need of thee those of you close your eyes and raise your hands somebody's not saved if you want to be saved say I want to know Jesus for my personal savior I want to know him for myself raise both your hands alright that's good praise God folks are saved in here that's good somebody needs to get strong in the Lord your back is up against the wall. Your back is against the wall. Hallelujah. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this thing. I've been doing so many things to try to get out. Making calls and nobody won't help me. My sister, my brother, nobody. But God said, I got your back. I got just what you need. You come on down to the front. I just want to lay hands on you. I just want to believe God with you. Come on down to the front now. Quickly, 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 quickly.